Hello and welcome back once again to this YouTube channel. As ever, throwing the rope and grapple iron of radical criticism over the prison wall of bourgeois discourse. There's so much that's spectacularly horrible in the news right now that it almost feels like an indulgence to focus on one particular tragedy. But on the 14th of October, the 83-year-old Iranian filmmaker Darius Majuhi was murdered, along with his wife Vahide, at their home in Karaj, near Tehran. The culprit is still not known, but the crime happened shortly after Merjuhi had dared the authorities to kill him for his continued opposition to state censorship. This stomach-turning outrage has brought many, including me, back to his breakthrough film, The Cow, from 1969, an eerie absurdist parable of power about a villager, Hassan, played by Ezatole Intazami, who prides himself on owning a cow which dies while he is away at market. His wife and the other villagers can't bear to tell him, so they hide the corpse and spin him a tale about how the cow has supposedly run away. The shock and grief and guilt, combined with perhaps intuiting his friend's obvious dishonesty, sends Hassan over the edge and he begins to think that he is the cow. <laughs> Hey! Mashta san! Botwan Bobo! Hold it, Tube Mashta san! Ma Mashta san is so. It's a very 60s film, by which I suppose I mean a very Western 60s film, with its distorted figures in the opening titles, the jangling soundtrack musical score, and that theme of paranoia and madness, Hassan's fear of the dark-clad thieves and brigands from the neighbouring village, the Buluris, who want to steal his cow. The cow can be seen as a materialist critique of society and its emphasis on a possession whose social and economic importance as a status symbol means that Hassan's identity is intimately bound up with it. He is, literally, nothing without the cow. And it has been seen as a story with religious dimension. It is, after all, a sacred cow. My own approach is to focus on the stubborn strangeness of the story's absurdism, which is less obviously amenable to interpretation. You might think of the joke about the woman who goes to the doctor and says, please help, my husband thinks he's a cow. And the doctor says, well, can't you talk him out of it? And she said, well, I would, doctor, but we need the milk. Perhaps the cow is an atheist document attacking irrational belief, or indeed theocracy and theocracies in general. The villagers can't bear to tell Hassan the truth about death, and Hassan very possibly couldn't bear to hear it, although the truth, though painful, might not have caused the complete breakdown he does in fact suffer. So they spin him this nonsense about the cow running away and build their whole behaviour system around this timid dishonesty, which involves incidentally cruelly locking up a local simple soul with what we might now today call learning difficulties, in case he does something unthinkable. He blurts out the truth. Perhaps all religion is based on this delusion and evasion in the face of death. The Cow is a movie with a very real historical importance. It was said to have been liked by the Ayatollah Khomeini himself during the 1979 revolution, and it was with his permission that this film and the whole new school of Iranian cinema flourished, giving rise to Kiwastami and Mahmoud Baf, a cinema of mysterious parables without overt, dangerous political content. These movies were adored in the West at film festivals in Cannes, London and New York. They increased Iran's soft power, cultural prestige, and helped create a situation whereby invading to create regime change was thinkable for Iraq and Afghanistan, say, but not Iran. All this Darius Merjuhi gave Iran and the world, and this is how the Iranian authorities appear to have repaid one of their most important artists. It is a very grim story. 
That's it. Please give this vlog a like and a share on your socials. Please subscribe and leave a comment if you haven't already done so. And also, please, again, if you haven't already done so, please buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. See you next time.